So I always love it when users leave a comment in a video that inspires another video. And in this case, I did a watch band video a while back. And this user is looking for a design for a different watch, in this case, a Samsung smartwatch. And I don't have one of those, but it, it's easy enough to create one. And I thought, you know, this is a great opportunity to teach you a little bit more about design if you're interested and easy ways to kind of work around it. So in this video, we're hacking design, so stick around. How's it going everybody? Steve here and welcome back to my shop. And uh, as noted, uh, this user is looking for really the, it happens to be a watch band, but really the question here is how do you actually go about design? And there's a couple of ways to do this. You can certainly start completely from scratch. And in the video I did on engraving watch bands, that's what I did. I did a whole bunch of measurements on an Apple watch band and created a new template and built a jig for, for creating these things. But if you're new to design or you haven't built one of these before, you might wanna start from something simpler. So in this case, I'll show you how to create a, a simple watch band jig and you can honestly use this for building anything. But in this case, we'll focus on the watch band because that's what was asked for here. And I'll show you how to, how to start from a photograph of a watch band and uh, you know, design a, a jig and you can use that for creating a single watch band or as many watch bands as you need. And I've said watch band enough, so let's get going. So the very first thing you're gonna need here is a photo of, of whatever you're trying to, to hack the design of. And in this case, what I did was I had an extra Apple watch band and uh, I'm just gonna take a straight down photo, uh, trying to be as close to perpendicular to the subject as I possibly can. And that's so we minimize distortion. Now you could just as easily grab a photo off of uh, off the internet somewhere uh, of your subject and you can probably find one that'll do what you want to do here. So uh, that's what we'll get started with and uh, we'll go from there. So if we're starting from an image that we shot ourselves, uh, we're going to have to clean it up because you can see the image I shot here. It honestly looks like crap. So. Uh, we're gonna wanna, wanna fix it up. There's the background that was supposed to be white is kind of this greenish gray color. And there's some shadows around the side due to some poor lighting. And uh, we have to get rid of all of that stuff. And the way we're gonna do it, I've loaded it into preview on the Mac, which is a really basic image handling application. Uh, if you're on Windows, you can find something similar uh, that will do this. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this image very contrasty. So what I'll do is I'll crank up the exposure and you can see it already made the background fairly white. And then I will sharpen the image just so that the edges are nice and clean. And let's see what it looks like. That's actually not too bad. You might want to uh, just see if there's any, any strange shadows or anything kicking around. And you can see if I use the kind of magic paintbrush here, I can really just kind of hone in there and say, take all of that stuff and just delete it. So now it's a tr on a transparent background, which is really what we ultimately want. There's a few other things here, like the latches and stuff. And honestly, we could clean those up if I, if I just go select some other part of the watch band here and paste it in. And what I'm gonna try and do is just get rid of all this, this latch that's here. And I'll do the same thing down on the other one. The, the actual color here is not important. What's important is we get rid of all those, those little artifacts that make up the button. There's also the latch and stuff here, but we can get rid of that uh, fairly quickly in Inkscape. So that's our image. You can see there's still one little piece here that we might wanna clean up. There's a shadow. Uh, the, the cleaner you get it at this point, uh, the better off you'll be uh, when it comes time to load this into Inkscape. So, you know, take a bit of time here and try and get rid of as many of these shadows as you possibly can because they're just going to make work for you later. And I can still see a couple here. All right, that's not too bad. Uh, maybe one more here to get rid of. I can select it. So now we've got a, a good image. Uh, 
the light up here is not actually shadow, it's a bit of a reflection, so we'll leave that and the rest of this looks okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll, I'll select all of this and copy it to the clipboard. Now that I have the image cleaned up, uh, the photo, what I'm gonna do is paste it into Inkscape and you can see the, the outline here is the page, a standard page. So let me paste this in and uh, it, you can see it's gonna be huge by comparison to that page, but that's okay. So what, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn this into a vector diagram. And the reason for that is because ultimately what we want is an outline of this. We don't want this photo. So the way to solve this is to go to path, the path option and trace bitmap. And again, if you're using some other drawing program, there'll be something similar here. And you can see that uh, what it did, I had this selected. So what it did is create a, a just a preview image. And uh, if I really darken this up, so the, I'm using brightness cutoff here. And that means anything that is white or close to white even uh, will be white and everything else will be black. So a lot of this stuff that's gray here will just turn black. And if I select this, I, what I did was change the threshold to make it a little more sensitive to, to things that were non-white. And if I update this, it looks not too bad. So I'll apply and you'll see now we have this image. So I can delete the original and this image doesn't look too bad, but you'll see we still have things like the holes and stuff, but it, it's now a vector and that's the important thing. What I'll do is I'll select the node viewing and you can see there's just a million little dots here. And we're gonna wanna clean up a lot of these. So you can see there's extraneous ones on the outside and all of these. Uh, and then inside the watch band, you can see there's a bunch as well, certainly around those holes, but there's just noise as well, uh, dust on the photo or, or other noise. So we can select all of this and just get rid of all of those pieces. Uh, anything that's on the inside won't matter anyway. If we're making a, a jig, anything, like if it does happen to cut a hole here, like it would for some of these, it's gonna be in a piece that we're gonna throw away anyway, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I'll clean this up. Now there's a couple of tricks you can do. So we know that the end of the watch band is a straight line, and you can see it drew a lot of, a lot of vector vectors in between here, and the line isn't perfectly straight. So what we can do is we can actually leave the, f the first one and the last one, and we can delete a lot of these. And now the line will look a little bizarre because <laughs> it's definitely not, not curved. Uh, so what we can do is select that line and Inkscape has this really nice feature called make this line straight. And that's what it did there. So uh, there we have it. Now there is one extra segment here we can get rid of. That's why there's that weird line across there. Uh, a little more noise down here. And we'll do the same thing here and just turn this into a straight line. And that's not too bad. Now we're gonna wanna scale these. You can, you can see this is a regular eight and a half by 11 page representation down here. And these things are massive. So anybody who's got a watch band that, that needs to be that big, stay away from them. Uh, but when I measured the, the watch band, uh, the, the length of this long one was about 142, a little more than 142 millimeters. Let's say 143. So what I'm gonna do is change the width of this and scale it in both directions. That's what the lock here means. And if I just say okay or hit enter, you can see it got much tinier and it now fits on a page. And if I look at it, the width here of course is 143. So now notice that, that I have the two pieces of watch band here, but they're both filled in and we definitely don't need that. Now, if you look in the lower left corner here, you'll see two things. One is the fill color and one is the stroke color and the stroke color says it's unset. The stroke is the outline of the shape. So we're gonna actually want an outline and the way to get that is to hold the shift key while you click the color that you want and I'll click black, so you really won't see much change, but I don't want the fill, and all I really need to do is release the shift key and just hit the color and that will change it. And just so you can still see this, I'll go back now and change the line thickness to, uh, uh, we'll be extreme here, well, yeah, we'll be extreme and we'll say half a millimeter. Uh, Inkscape 
or, or the laser won't actually care. It'll cut a vector as thin as, as the laser beam, but uh, you may want to actually scale this down. I normally use about a quarter of a millimeter, uh, which is roughly the thickness of my laser beam. Uh, so there we go. We have two things that are pretty much the way we want them, but they're not quite straight. So again, I'm going to go back to this magical path menu here. And instead of selecting both of them with one click, I'm going to use this break apart. And what that does is makes individual closed vectors uh, single shapes. And you can see now when I select them, there's only one of them. So if I select now, and I, I'm going to straighten this out. And the way to do that is I select it. And if I click it again, you'll see the anchors turn from resizing arrows to rotation arrows. And that's what I'm going to want to do. So I'm going to zoom in here and you can see the lines kind of jaggy, but that's okay. And I'm just going to grab this and, and just start to rotate it ever so slightly until the shape line matches the, the selection line. And you can see straight across all the way up. It's, it's nice and straight, and I did, uh, you can see there's some extra garbage in there, but that's okay, I'm not gonna worry about it. Uh, we could delete them, and that'll clean it up a little. Um, and I'll do the same thing with, as far as straightening, I'll do the same thing here. And now I'll zoom in, and I'll just grab the corner again and do a little rotation. And now that one's straight, and again, there's some garbage here we can get rid of uh, as individual shapes. Again, we wouldn't normally have to get rid of these, but they're there and they're easy to get, so we'll clean them up. So there we go, there's our shape, and all I really need to do now is send this over to the laser. I can pack these together and cut them out, and I'll make a, a jig for watch bands. And the original poster uh, is using a full spectrum laser, which means they're using Retina Engrave 3. So to kind of reproduce the environment, I will use Retina Engrave as well. I won't go through the settings there. It's just a basic cut. And I'm gonna use cardboard because, in part because it's cheap. And uh, if we make a mistake, we can always cut another one. And when we're done, we'll see how closely it fits the watch band. So let me cut this out and, I'll, and uh, we'll go to the next step here. Okay, so I got my, my shapes cut out in, in cardboard. Let's see how things work. And I'll take the watch band and it's not surprisingly, it just kind of drops in there and we can now use that as a jig. We can engrave, uh, you now know how to do it. And it's pretty simple as you can see and the results are fantastic. So there you go, that was, uh, you know, the, the end-to-end -end process really of, of starting from a photo of something, tracing it as a bitmap, and ultimately cutting it out, in this case, a watch band, uh, a watch band jig. And you can use this technique for other things as well. You've seen me do it in other videos, if you watch some of my videos, where I'll just go to Google Images and I'll grab something and uh, trace it as a bitmap and uh, cut it out on a laser. Now, it works best with, with clip art or cartoon art, we'll say where uh, you have generally heavy dark lines where there's really no distinction. In the case of the photo here, you saw I had to do a lot of manual tweaking after uh, to clean up the image, but generally with clip art, you don't have to do that. So uh, use this technique anytime you wanna do something. If you wanna create uh, you know, some Mickey Mouse trinket for, uh, for one of your kids, uh, you, know, you can just go to Google Images and grab something and, and cut it out now. Of course, be sensitive to things like trademarks uh, and copyrights. So you can't do, you can't copy things that you don't have license for and sell them, obviously. But that wasn't our intent here. Our intent was to just create a, be able to quickly create a jig for 
uh, in this case, a Samsung watch band. Anyway, we'll wind the video down. Hopefully, uh, the original post uh, poster of the comment got, got something out of this. If you haven't, feel free to put more comments in there. Uh, I'm happy to answer. And if you run into these kind of problems, I'm happy to create videos and show you how I do things. Uh, there's always a million ways to do something, but uh, I'll show you how I do it. And uh, with that, uh, we'll wind it down. I'll put a video up in the corner here. Uh, if you're interested, go watch that and I'll see you over there. Otherwise, get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.